Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another video and guess that didn't even try. Now, there's plenty of these on my 600 pound life and I think it just kind of boils down to it's a lot to overcome. A lot of people aren't going to be willing to put in all that effort or change and make the effort. I mean, Penny on the screen, the what is she? The wonton waddler or whatever. That's what we could call her, but she was probably one of the worst that didn't try, but it's not an unheard story. It's just so much. You feel like you can't overcome it, but you're absolutely worth trying. And that's kind of the message I'm trying to get apart. But let's check out the people that didn't even try. We had to lose weight when I got here. Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Oh, In this God. show, every patient has to be quite disciplined and motivated to change their lives by losing weight on their own. He was on Family by the Ton. I don't know why they always show him. I don't even think that was a My 600 Pound Life thing. It's obvious that it's way too hard to turn around the bad eating habits of years and Damn. relying on the standard 1200 calorie diet and exercise, so some patients lose their patience and make you wonder why they went to Dr. Now's place in the first place. So in today's video, you'll see some guests that didn't even try on my... I can tell you why. They thought it was a magic cure. I did the same thing at the start. I was like, whatever, just cut out my stomach. Why do I have to freaking try? But it's just a tool. They're not going to do everything for you, and they need to see you like make progress beforehand. But it's a great freaking tool. 600 pound life. Five, Gina oh, Krasin. God. At the age of 28, weighing 600 pounds, Gina seems bound to her chair while doing nothing except eat, sleep, I remember her. She's the one that doesn't bathe for like a month at a time. And her poor girlfriend, man. She'd have to have a snorkel to go down there, man, just to get some fresh air. Sleep and repeat. Even she takes a bath once a month as being lazy and dull. Even her mom, Kathy, and wife, Beth, complain about that. I mean, of course, that would be nasty. Because being that big and not taking a shower daily can make you stink. You see how greasy her hair is? Because all she's doing is take her hooker baths on the toilet. Like she's sitting there splashing water on herself while she poops. That's not a way to get clean. When she met Dr. Now, her weight was 606 pounds. He suggested that she should lose 50 pounds in two months and even told her that she should make her own meal. While talking with Beth, he told her to stop feeding her when they went back to New Jersey, their home. Gina even shared that on the week-long trip back to her home, she didn't start the trip. I mean, but what are you going to do if you stop feeding her? You think she's going to go on like a bath strike or something? She's already friggin' doing that. Uh, what's another friggin' month at that point? She probably smells like a skunk. But whatever. Well, it is fair oh, and actually shit. makes sense because on a road car trip, Beep. being on a diet would be pretty hard and uncomfortable, even for a normal person. But even when they get home, Gina starts claiming that she isn't feeling well because the trip was hectic and now she's tired. So to cope up with this, she needs something to eat that isn't in her diet chart. But her mother and wife Beth totally refuse to give in to her, which isn't common according to the show. I can't believe that one. Oh, we traveled a long way today. I need some friggin' what? Taco Bell. Taco Bell's the only thing that cures my anger from all this traveling. I, I don't know, man, but people do tend to try to get the last bit of food they can get before it's time to actually start the diet process. But Gina started doing her drama and declared that she's overwhelmed and started complaining. When all her stubbornness went in vain, she asked Beth to teach her how to make turkey burgers. For the viewers, that was a yes signal or they were thinking that maybe something could make wonders. But Gina being Gina disappointed the viewers when she met Dr. Now in another meetup. And I mean, could you imagine the desperation in her when she's like, Ugh. Whatever, just give me friggin' turkey burgers. Like, turkey burgers are pretty good, but that definitely wasn't what she was going for. Despite losing the weight, she gained six pounds. On her next appointment, she lost over 60 days, a measly five pounds. And on her third appointment, she lost 20 pounds in over six months. A net loss uh, of just over 19. Three pounds a month, damn. That's that Amberlynn Reed diet. That ain't good enough, chief. Pounds. Try to start the diet and exercise plan Dr. Now gave me until we got back home. 4. Jean Covey 48 year old participant Jean, who came on the show, used to rely totally on her parents to perform almost every kind of task. 
even the basic ones. Not just her, even her whole household seemed pretty miserable and depressed. But can you see the way she's postured right there? Like, you almost always put your weight on your legs like that when you're that size. It'll mess your posture up, man. She probably has a hell of a hunchback. Mine's not that bad, but I definitely need to work on keeping my damn shoulders back from here on. Actually, she was basically facing immobility when she was first featured. Even due to her and her mother's poor hygiene, she also had an affected growth on her leg that's constantly bleeding. While on the drive to Houston to meet Dr. Now, she ordered a really big soda to combat her stress. Gaining 50 pounds in six weeks on your own to get down to your overall goal I gave you. But instead, you gained back. Well, she weighs in at 700. I mean, could you imagine somebody telling you that a big gulp's the only thing that gets rid of the demons? Like, that's just freaking insane. Earn two pounds when she gets to Dr. Now's place. Before her infection would kill her, the doctor suggested she should be hospitalized to deal with it. While in her stay at the hospital, she lost 53 pounds, but she wasn't already hey. happy about the diet when she got to know that she's supposed to lose the rest of her 100 pounds on her own. But instead... I mean, the hospital probably wasn't prescribing Slurpees, though. That probably helped. I was smoking, too, when my surgery started. Quick way for your surgeon to cancel that thing. He canceled on me because I smelled like cigarettes, and I was pissed. I cussed him out. Instead of losing, she gained 30 pounds later. But as she was quite confident, she's given a second chance to lose 100 pounds in 60 days. She even claimed at the next appointment, she was going to shove her progress in Dr. Now's face. Oh. But the irony is, she only lost 8 pounds in the whole two months. Well, in the yeah, you shoved something in his face, all right. And also, I didn't think they were going to go progress. I don't know why my brain started to think prostate. And I was like, well, she ain't got one of those, right? End of her episode, something quite sad and tragic happened. Her father passed away during her episode that really Aww. made her depressed. She eventually gave up her weight loss journey. And just stared at me. You don't have to worry about it. I hate. Well, not just that. After that tragic incident of her life, Jean's life started becoming terrible as her mother fell ill and she had to go through this gastric surgery alone. Damn, so she was going through it, but that's the thing. A lot of times life's going to throw curveballs at you. Are you going to stay in the box or are you going to run for cover? Like, you just, you, it's hard, man. It's hard to say because I've never lost a parent like that, somebody that close, immediate family like that. But I don't know. I can't say that I wouldn't fold and do the same thing. But I guarantee that you should not. You should keep going and honor their memory. But, but do you know what exactly she did to make things right in her favor? She ended up suing my 600-pound day production company. She claimed that the company promised to pay the medical expenses of her mother, but it didn't fulfill its promise to pay the medical bills. Really? She further shared that she and her mother said no to appearing on the show or filming the episode, but they were forced to appear. Damn, my 600 pound life camera crew's thirsty, huh? Well, I guess they figured, all right, we gave her the $1,500 advance. She's on this sucker now or we're suing her. And they're gonna pay for her mom's medical expenses? I would think that's a pretty pricey procedure i don't know what she had done but i would think that that's going to add up i wasn't focused i wouldn't have stopped smoking and i wouldn't have stopped sp soda a damn soda harder than Three. cigarettes penny seeger one uh. of the classic zero effort episodes was the appearance of penny seeger in season two i guess i won't have to say much about her as you can clearly guess what i'm trying to say well, to the people who aren't familiar with Penny, when this entry is specially added for you. On her episode, she got famous as a speaker of a famous line. Nobody told me I had to lose weight when I got here. Yeah, they don't tell you that. Yeah, we're just on the show for shits and gigs. You know, it has nothing to do with losing weight at all. But the Rangoon Rampant... Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make up any more names for her. She's the wonton wobbler, the wonton wrecker. There we go. Well, she only lost about 35 pounds throughout her entire episode and was seen still sneaking food into the hospital despite getting gastric bypass. Therefore, I can say that she literally made zero effort to change her lifestyle, even getting up or moving. Even she had to be transported by a whole team for her checkup when she started skipping doctor's appointments. Well, at that point, she should have been walking and down to 250 pounds at the end of it all. Yeah, she refused to walk. She's probably one of the worst cases of not trying. And also, how the hell did she eat a french fry like that? Because I didn't see her chew. She kind of just sucked that puppy down.
But despite that, she somehow still managed to fool herself by claiming all that as a personal victory. Doctor now accused her of being delusional for refusing to follow the exercise and diet regime and because of rigidness. She also went against all his suggestions. Oh yeah, oh, that was the best part when she's like, I can reach my coochie now, I've lost weight. Look, I'm missing a damn roll. See it? See it? That roll's gone. Man, I, that was a good episode. I liked her. She was so delusional, and she's in Maryland. That pr ki probably kind of explains why she's crazy. That's where I am, too. And left the show eventually by moving to Maryland. Dr. Now even claimed that Penny's food addiction would not take much time and kill her in the future. Why am I on a soft diet? That's the orders that he, well, he needs to get his poop in a group, Ross. I'm old. Oh, God. Two, Holly Hager. Holly Hager, at the age of 38, admitted that she lives to eat food, and she's addicted to food and never wants to stop her eating habits. Well, when she met oh, Dr. God. Now for the first time during her first appointment, she weighed in at 658 pounds. Dr. Now warned her that her odds of long-term failure are hot. Yeah, isn't this the chick that was like the chocolate colonoscopy chick or whatever? She just couldn't live without it? I don't know. She was pooping chocolate. What? Was that? No, I don't even think we're talking about the same show. I think we're talking, I'm thinking about some coffee enema lady I saw on YouTube. I hope she didn't do that with no damn chocolate. Because she's gone through weight loss surgery once already in her life and failed. So he set her on a goal to lose 50 pounds over the next 60 days. He even suggested to Holly that she should start walking for at least an hour a day. How After the you. appointment with Dr. Now, Holly apparently seemed already worried, and she even claimed that being told to give up all the foods, especially the ones she liked, is almost the same thing as being told that Dr. Now can't help. You know what's funny? Like, you really feel like you're panicking when the surgery's about to come because you're so worried about not having those foods anymore that I bet she does feel like her life's over if she can't have what she wants to eat. But your life's just going to get that much better after you lose the weight and you're more active and everything. Chocolate's not the end-all be-all. For me, it really makes no sense. After that, Holly said right before settling back in her wheelchair that she was trying pretty hard to not depend on the wheelchair. I had some trouble with cravings still, and it's just a repeating record. In her episode, we all also saw her chopping up some lettuce for a salad. But wait, you'll see that after some salad. You want any friggin' greens with that dressing? Holy hell, man. That's probably like a thousand calories a damn dressing. I don't think that's how a side salad's supposed to look. For the next appointment, even though she has only lost 29 pounds. But according to the Dr. Now's words, that's not good at all. She didn't lose her weight, as per his expectations. Right after moving to Houston for her second chance, they did something highly incredible to make matters worse. They were seen still getting delivery of junk food due to not having the kitchen set up to cook. Oh yeah, them damn pots and pans, man. They'll stop you every time. You can't possibly go get those. Fifty, sixty dollars on Chinese, though? That makes sense. Well, according to the viewers, that's a very pretty absurd and nonsense excuse. A bit, I guess. Well, yes, you are. So, last time you are... Holly has lost 18 pounds at the second follow-up appointment, and she blamed her inescapable obsessive thoughts that repeat in her mind. I want chocolate. 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 It's chocolate's not even all that good anymore. I don't crave chocolate at all, but if you would have told me this back in the day, I wouldn't have believed you. Because I was all about some damn Reese Cups and Twix. They're so good, man. But now, really, I think if I ate them, I'd feel sick to my stomach. Too sweet. One, Nicole Lewis. 23-year-old Nicole, when appearing on the show, weighed almost 700 pounds at the beginning of her episode. She claimed that she felt humiliated when she had to get hosed down on the back porch by what her boyfriend, that? Charlie. That's why she hates her whole body. Well, as viewers, now you'd be thinking that this thought would motivate her to start eating healthy. But that's never happened in her case, as on the way to Houston, they made a burger, fries, and coke stop, and a sub stop, and stress snacking on top. I mean, you would think that's kind of your line, right? Like, whip out the hose, it's time for mama to get wet. Like, come on. You'd think you'd draw the line right there. Once that starts happening and you're bathing outside, like, it's probably time to stop at a little less Carl's Jr. How about that? When she met Dr. Now, he set her a goal to lose 30 pounds over the next month in two weeks. After that, both were seen eating corn, which is an exactly low carb, but 
in a large quantity. But unfortunately, at that next appointment, her attempt to eat healthy did nothing, as Nicole hadn't even lost half of her goal, she only lost 11 pounds. Nicole missed her doctor's appointment under the stress of hunting for a house and job in Houston. I mean, in all fairness though, 11 pounds ain't that bad for most people that start out on the show. She absolutely should have lost more, right? But hear me out, that's not that bad when some people gain 20, you know? That's a fast food habit, but I don't have a choice because I can't get up and is that her? So to cope with that stress, she ate a cheeseburger and claimed that as she's been holding back for so long, according to her, this little bit of cheating will not cause much damage, despite the fact that since coming to Houston, they've basically been surviving off fast food. I mean, I guess the grease gets rid of the gremlins, the grief, whatever. Well, in the next appointment, it's revealed and made everything very clear that Nicole has only lost six pounds. Italian urban cheese, foot long. That's what she said. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching. And if you guys found it interesting, I'd much appreciate it if you comment down below about the video and leave a. It's definitely interesting. I like seeing the people that didn't try almost as much as the ones that did. Just something about it kind of makes me remember how it felt starting out when you feel like there's no point, it's too much. You really feel like, man, I, it's just a huge obstacle. You don't want to overcome it. I mean, you do want, what am I saying? You do want to overcome it, right? It just seems like a lot. You don't feel like you'll ever get there, and that's why everybody tries to cheat. Like, what What do they say? Uh, da, da, da. The road to success is always under construction. Get to work. But these people could absolutely turn it around. They don't have to give up on themselves. They could make it there. But all right, guys, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Bye.